Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I'm going to be cooking up beef back ribs and beef short ribs. Let's get going. All right, like I said, we're going to be cooking up beef back ribs and beef short ribs. And the beef short ribs I have, basically these are pretty small beef back ribs compared to what I'm you know, used to getting. So I bought six nice chunks. <laughs> I'm usually cooking up racks of beef short rib, but I got chunks just to sort of supplement. Again, these are sparse ribs. And uh, unfortunately my butcher didn't have anything bigger than this. And I mean, there's bones showing through. They'll be good though. So the first thing I'm going to do is peel the membrane. And on beef back ribs, I definitely like to peel that membrane. It's very thick. I know some of it's already missing here. And I always do this on the back ribs. Um, not so much on the beef short ribs. You don't really need to on the beef short ribs. And actually on the, on the racks, it can kind of help the meat come off while it's cooking. You know, as it starts to swell and rise, it'll start kind of stretching off the bone, pulling off the bone. So I just leave it on the, the short ribs. But you do it just like you would on some spare ribs. Sometimes like just like on a rack of pork ribs that'll come off in one beautiful swoop and other times like this one of course on my video it struggles with me. That's what I'm talking about. This is more like it. Of course as soon as I start talking yeah this is still peeling way better than the other guy did. So on this one I'm just going to trim off some of this excess fat doesn't really need. So I was watching the newest video from T. Roy Cooks and he was using a rub that I really enjoy and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna use it on this. It's uh, perfect for beef, I think. It goes great on steaks. And it's from a Texas Sausage Company. Good stuff and um, good guy. I got to hang out with him in the Austin area um, a few months ago. Really good guy. I'll have a link to his site down below. Um, he makes really good sausage, but uh, I don't know if he sends the sausages out, you know, nationwide yet or if it's just Texas. I know he was talking about, you know, he wanted to get it going where he could ship, but the rubs and things like that I'm sure he has available. This rub is really good. Yeah, these ribs, I mean, they're, gonna, they're going to be great, but just not the big beefy back ribs that I'm used to getting from my butcher. Kind of a bummer, but again, they'll be really good. All right, here's these, again, this, these are gonna make up for it right here, these big, beautiful chunks of beef short rib. I'm used to cooking these on, on the, as a whole rack. I'm, very rarely do I buy them cut up like this, but again, it was just a quick, easy, not too expensive solution to making up for the lack of meat on these um, back ribs. All right, I'm gonna let these ribs sweat through the rub a little bit. In the meantime, I've got the Backwood Smoker Chubby 3400 preheating. I'll meet you guys at the pit. So the smoker's preheated. We're running at 250 degrees and I'm just burning regular old Kingsford blue bag and a few small chunks of hickory in there. I do of course have the water tray filled up with water. So typical beef rib cook at this point. Now with this particular cooker, I won't be spraying these with water. I won't need to. There's a lot of water in that tray and it's going to be a very, very moist environment inside of this cooker. This thing puts out some really, really good beef ribs. Um, we have a lot of construction going on down below, which uh, you'll be seeing. It's, it's an ongoing project. It's going to be a while, but you'll be seeing the new, a new area that I have very, very soon. But this was literally the only cooker I had access to for quite some time. <laughs> and I was doing all of my personal cooks on, on this. It's, it's a great little cooker. Anyway, I'll see you guys as the cook progresses. Okay, we are two hours in. This thing is running 
stable as all get out. Once it got settled in at 250, I haven't touched the dampers one bit. Haven't had to add any fuel. It's just running really rock solid. I like it. Uh, let's check out the meat. It's definitely not tender enough yet. I mean, it's it's got a another couple hours to go here. I get some nice, you know, nice. It's got some nice color developing. I want to see a little bark develop though. Let me see. You can see it's no need for misting this thing. This meat is very moist. It's good. It smells really good. This thing burns so clean. It's a cooker I honestly should be using a little bit more than I do. I really, uh, every time I use it, I ask myself, why don't I use this thing more? It's, it's a really nice cooker. And I think it's a good bang for the buck. Uh, anyway, so we're, again, we're two hours in. I'm guessing another two hours. There is a chance that the uh, short ribs may take a little bit longer than the, than the back ribs, obviously. Uh, obviously, I'll keep you guys posted on everything. See you in a bit. We're officially at the three hour mark and I'm going to do something to these beef ribs. It's probably going to raise a few comments from a few people. I know there's a lot of people that are adamantly against saucing beef ribs, but I grew up eating sauced beef ribs. I like sauced beef ribs and I'm going to sauce my beef ribs. Um, what I have here is just a, a standard tomato based barbecue sauce. But what I did, it's like a four to one ratio of the barbecue sauce mixed with a little uh, beef consomme. So it, it makes it a lot more savory. And, and again, you know, I've been to barbecue places all over the country and in Texas and Oklahoma and stuff. And they're, you know, they're always serving barbecue sauce on the side. And I think, you know, the logic with restaurants is, or if you're cooking for a whole bunch of people, you want to make sure they, if they want to use sauce, they get the sauce that they like, the flavors they like, the spice that they like. My family and I dig on this, this combination, and that's what I'm going with. It's just like pizza. There's certain foods when you do a YouTube video on it, it's like you feel this need to explain yourself, but it's for me. You guys do what you want to do. All right, let's check these out. They're looking good. So the short ribs, I'm not going to obviously sauce the bottoms. There's nothing to eat there. You guys can hear those dogs, but I think they smell what's cooking. These are feeling good, but they're still not there yet. The these short ribs. Like I said, they may go a little bit longer than the uh, the back ribs. Normally, I'd probably be pulling these out, putting them in a pan, but I don't want to move my cameras all around. Sorry. Again, this thing's, it'll come up to temp where I need it to be very quickly after I shut the door. It's, I mean, it's proved itself millions of times with me. Not millions, but. They're looking good, smelling great. Again, barbecue sauce of your choice, four to one ratio mixture, and I'm using the, the, the Campbell's consomme, but you know, any beef broth I think would do. It's just, it, it, believe me, it makes a great beef barbecue sauce. So you guys will be seeing me again when these things are ready to pull. See you then. Okay, we are at four hours, 15 minutes, and these ribs are done and they are, turn out great. Just really probe tender. And so are the back ribs. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ribs off the pit, let them rest a little bit, just tend them with some foil, let them rest a few minutes, get them sliced up and give you guys a try, get my family fed, see you at the table. All right, so the family is inside the house enjoying their food. So obviously there's a rack missing and a couple of the little short ribs but it's sliced like butter inside the house. I'm guessing 
This one, oh yeah. <laughs> What camera? There, you see that smoke ring? So I've already tried a little bit of this when I was in there. We call it schnitzeling. I guess kind of pit master privilege, so to speak. I'm going to cut all these. Oh, it's just like butter. All right, let me cut one of these guys off the bone. We'll check a kind of a cross cut of it, see what it looks like. Just first of all, really, really juicy. Nice. Okay, the gloves are off. Let's try one of these. Uh, again, just such a beautiful smoke ring. You know, on that beef rib, you still get that, there's that secondary membrane there, but these are tender, the meat is tender as I'll get out. All right, let's try this short rib. Money, right here, this is money, I'm starving. I'm thinking that probably makes it taste even better than it does, but I, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to tear up at least half this rack, and I'm eyeballing this bad boy right here, this nice chunk of beef short rib. Good stuff. Have some baked potato in the house and some vegetables, some broccoli, I think. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you're not subscribed, please think about hitting that subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost you a cent. If you are subscribed, and you haven't rang this bell here, bing, ring it. That way you'll get, you know, stay up to date with what's going on in the channel and stuff. If you like the video, give it a big old thumbs up. If you don't like it, big old thumbs down twice. Do it twice. Let me see. Oh, I'm supposed to talk about my beer now. This is Orange Avenue Wit. It's from Cor uh, Coronado. Gosh, I live in San Diego. Coronado Brewery. It's good stuff. It's a wheat beer and it's brewed with spices. I think there is even a little like orange zest that they brewed it with. It's really good. See you in the next video. Cheers.